Our dogs have absolutely loved having us around all day, every day, while we work from home during COVID-19. And it might cause them some anxiety when we return to working in the office now that both Heather and I have been vaccinated. So in this episode of The Great Show Greyhounds, I want to discuss managing separation anxiety. Heather and I are fortunate to have jobs that can be done remotely. So when the COVID-19 pandemic started becoming a mainstream concern back in March of 2020, our employer packed up our computers and told us to take them home and that we'd get back together when this was all over. A lot of people were able to take advantage of remote working and as weeks became months and months became a year, many people adopted pets because they had a lot of available time to commit to the new animal. I know our dogs really enjoyed the extra attention. When we moved our computer set up from the kitchen table down to the basement, we had to bring down all their beds so that they could be with us for long napping sessions, occasionally getting up to join us in a video conference call. They can be let out any time of the day and pretty much get attention whenever they want. And that may come to an end here real soon now that vaccines are available. I expect that a lot of workers will be returning to the office and that is animal adoption organizations concerned that they'll have people returning pets because of behavioral issues stemming from separation anxiety. Dogs can release that stress in many ways. They may pace back and forth while panting. They may bark or howl while we're absent. They may chew on furniture or shoes or the TV remote. Wilson used to handle his anxiety by stress peeing on the carpet. We've had a fair amount of experience with separation anxiety with some of our fosters over the years. And the group that we foster for, Heartland Greyhound Adoption, was able to give us a lot of really good advice that I'd like to share with all of you. If your dog is having issues with you returning to work or you expect that they're going to have issue, then try some of these things out. See if they work. But I want to strongly encourage you to also reach out to your adoption organization for help before you get too frustrated with your dog's behavioral issue. If you wait too long, then it might become too difficult for you to reset your relationship with your dog. We've had dogs return for things that we could have easily provided solutions for if only adopters had just said they were having difficulties. Unfortunately, by the time people are reaching out to us to make arrangements to drop off the dog, it's too late to salvage that relationship with the animal. These people are done. They do not want to deal with the hassle anymore. And that's just sad. The dog can't control its own stress level. They get used to a routine and they don't understand why things sometimes have to change. It's up to us as pet owners to find a constructive way to relieve their anxiety. Hopefully the following activities can help with that. I like to refer to them as alone training. Now, as I said, greyhounds are very routine dogs and for the past year, they've been just lying on their beds on the floor of the room we've set up as a makeshift home office. It's been a long time, and this is how they think it's always going to be. Soon our employer will tell us the date that we'll be returning to working in the office. And it would be a good idea for a few weeks beforehand to not let our dogs join us in our home office. That way they can get used to the idea of being in another area of the house. They'll be able to hear us from the other room, so they'll know they aren't completely alone. During COVID-19, I certainly wasn't interested in going anywhere. So my dogs haven't actually been alone in over a year. It would be beneficial for me to just simply leave the house for a short period of time, just so that they can get used to the idea of being on their own. We didn't always know if our fosters would have issue being alone, so we used to set up my old video camera and record how they handled our absence. That way, we learned how they released their stress. Sometimes the solution was as simple as putting the TV or radio on so that they could hear voices. Other times putting them in a thunder shirt was good for giving them a calming squeeze, kind of like a hug. A chew toy can be a great distraction. We can put frozen treats inside of a Kong or a soup bone. In this example, we have dog food mixed with pumpkin, and when frozen, it can take them a while to extract it. It can occupy their time for a bit and settle them down. People who are into essential oils would say that lavender is very calming, so I could run that through a diffuser or I can put a drop of that on their collar so that they could smell it. But it is very important that I do not put any of that on their nose, as that would be way too overwhelming for them. Their noses are far more sensitive than our own. 
I am a big advocate for crate training. During their racing careers, they would each have their own crate to sleep in at the kennel, and having one set up in my home is a familiar place for them. My greys have not been crated for kind of a long time, so it might be a good idea for me to put them in there for a bit, even while I'm still home, just so that they don't always associate it with my leaving. I don't want them panicking every time I put them in there, thinking that I'm going to be leaving them alone. I want crating to be a positive experience. Maybe I'll give them a treat, rewarding them for going inside. I can even feed them in there to make them more comfortable with it. Another option, which seems a little odd, is to put like a dirty shirt or something of my laundry in there that smells like me. That way they don't feel so alone. We always have a crate set up with the door open. That way our fosters can go inside whenever they need a little bit of alone time. Many of them like it in there, but sometimes we'll have a foster who's just not so keen on being in a crate. In that case, we have a baby gate that we can use to keep the dogs contained in one room. That way, they have more space to move around without running wild throughout the house. Although, if they release their stress by chewing on things that they shouldn't chew on, then putting them in a muzzle may be a good idea. Especially if circumstances require them to be crated, even if they don't like it. Then the muzzle can stop them from chewing on the metal, which can be very damaging to their teeth. We generally had pretty good success with these alone training exercises with our various fosters over the years, but when it came to our own dog, Wilson, well, none of this worked. In that case, I don't feel that there is any shame in talking with a veterinarian about anxiety medication. It made a world of difference for Wilson. A vet would know if the issue is behavioral or medical. I strongly recommend these alone training exercises because I don't want your dog to develop a habit of distressing each day when you leave for work. I don't want your dog to associate you leaving with negative feelings. Okay, we need to lighten the mood. We've been talking about anxiety for like six or seven minutes. One thing that is interesting that I learned from my dogs during this whole working from home from COVID is that at four o'clock, they think they should get dinner, and they do not break this eye contact until I feed them at six. And they have learned that the dial tone from when I log out of my phone means it's time to eat, and they go wild. I covered a lot of material today. I hope some of it can help you if your dog experiences separation anxiety. I don't want you to be frustrated to the point where you think returning the dog is the only option remaining. In the next episode, I want to further discuss some of the challenges that may come up with your dog, what to do about them, and when it just might not be a good fit. A link to that episode, as well as the previous, can be found on the right side of the screen. Down below is a link to a crate training video that I made a while back, and on the left is a link to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Follow us on social media at Great Show. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.